Today we begin a brand new series at all of our church campuses, and I want to welcome you whether you are in Wexford, Oakland, Sewickley Valley, East End, or Dormont. Today as a church, we're going to begin to learn how to fight. Now, did anybody else realize that in that video right there was our lead pastor? He was one of the boxers in there. I mean, he was bobbing. He was weaving. I mean, he was throwing some pretty heavy punches on the heavy bag and on the mitts. I mean, he looked impressive. And I tell you what, man, I would not want to get into a fist fight with Scott Stevens. All right? Because here's the deal. I don't know how to properly fight. All right? I, I just don't. Right? I try to throw one punch at him, and he would, like, hit me with this combination of punches I didn't even see coming. Because you know why? He's been training with Jack Mook for all these years now. You know, he's been training with him, and I wouldn't even see the punches coming, and the only thing that I would know to do to try to defend myself against Scott Stevens is hug him, <laughs> right? Brother hates hugs. He doesn't like being tired. So wrap him up and wait for the bell, right? That's what I would do. What can I say, everybody? I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter, all right? So that's not entirely true. As far back as I can remember, I can only remember two actual fights in my life. Now, if you don't count the fights with my brothers and, and my sister and, and uh, you know, or you know, like when in sports you get into those shoving matches, if you don't count all that stuff, I can only remember two fights. One was with Sean in elementary school. And the brother, he whooped me good out on the baseball field. He crushed me. All right, it was awful. The other fight was this, with, with Jim in 10th grade on the bus. I threw one punch, everybody, and he went down. <laughs> yeah, all right? See, all I'm saying, I warned him I, several times. All I'm saying, he never should have said that about my sister. All right, he just sh should have never said that. And I'm lucky, because if Jim actually got back up, you know, and he actually wanted to fight me back, I would have been in trouble because I don't actually know how to fight, all right? I, I don't know back then. I still don't know how to properly fight. And that's exactly why we're doing this series. That's why we're doing this series. Maybe you, like me, growing up and into my early 20s, I didn't fully realize something. I didn't realize that we are all engaged in a fight, all of us. A fight that has lives and souls hanging in the balance. That each and every one of us is already in this real spiritual fight for our lives. See, here's the truth. We all have an enemy. And this is the same enemy that opposes God himself. He's known as Satan, the devil. And he's very real. And he is very trained and he's prepared to destroy your life and mine. So my question for you as we begin this fight series is this. Do you know how to properly fight? And here's the reason why we're doing this series is because we have a hunch as a teaching team that many of us don't know how to fight. Many of us don't even know who our opponent is. So when we hear the name Satan the devil, Lucifer, Beelzebub, we think of those cute little cartoons, don't you? You know what I'm talking about? You know, the angel's on this shoulder and, and Satan's on this shoulder and for whatever reason, why is he always wearing red, right? And, and he always has this little, you know, costume on and he's got, you know, a pointy tail going on and for whatever, he has horns. Why, why does he always have a pitchfork? I don't know, right? Or when, when we think uh, about Satan, we think about the latest portrayal of him that we see in movies or on television shows. And we sort of write Satan off as this fictional character who makes for maybe a good movie plot or a great Halloween costume to scare the kids of the neighborhood. See, here's the deal. Many people who have grown up in the church Many of you who are here today do not believe that Satan is real. You don't believe he's real. 
Check this out. In my research to get ready for today's message, I came across these surveys. A 2009 Barna survey reported that nearly 60% of Christian Americans view the devil as only a symbol of evil. They believe in evil, but not the devil. A survey done by Lifeway Research in 2010 found this, that four in 10 Christians who are born between 1980 and 1990 believe that Satan is not real, that he's just a symbol of evil. That's 40% of 27 to 37-year-old Christians who were surveyed who do not believe that Satan is real. And this is very confusing to me, and it's really sad for me. Because if you identify yourself as a Christian, logically that should mean, and I realize it doesn't always mean this, but logically that should mean that you believe in Jesus and that you believe that Jesus is real. So here's a reality check for us today as the church. When you believe that Jesus is real, you have to believe Satan is real. And you have to believe that Satan's fight against you is real. Why? Because Jesus did. See, the first thing that we're going to see is that Jesus himself fought Satan. Jesus fought Satan. The scriptures are very clear that he had interactions with Satan. We're going to take a look at one of those interactions today. Secondly, Jesus trained others to fight Satan. So my question, why, why would he spend time training other people to fight Satan if he didn't exist? Why would he warn his followers of the devil's schemes if the devil didn't exist? So if you're here today and in any way you doubt the existence of Satan or spiritual warfare, what we're calling fight, you need to wrestle with that statement that I put up there because you cannot believe in Jesus without also believing in Satan. Why? Because Jesus did. It's that simple. And if those stats are possibly true of our church today, then we've got some real training to get ready for our opponent. We're going to need some courage and determination. We're going to need some coaching to get ready for this fight that we're already in. So today, I'm going to be your coach for round one of this fight, okay? And we're going to be working on the basics of knowing our opponent. We have to know whom we're fighting against. And let me just tell you where we're going the next couple of weeks before I dig into round one. So round two next week, our lead pastor, Scott Stevens, will be your coach. He's going to be in your corner, right? He's going to equip you to be able to recognize the punches that Satan always throws at you. He has a particular pattern of the way that he fights against you. And Scott's going to train us on how to fight back against Satan from a victory stance. It's going to be a great week, everybody. Make sure you're here for it. And then for round three, we're going to be bringing in a coach from Nashville, Tennessee, everybody. I'm excited. He's been my coach since 2002. And he is a guy that has helped train me to recognize the reality of spiritual warfare. I've got to be honest with you that before I met this guy, I didn't take Satan or spiritual warfare for real. And this guy helped me understand that it is very real. He's also become a close friend of our lead pastor, Scott Stevens, and he is no way a stranger to Northway. You already know him. His name's Dave Buring. He's going to be our coach for round three of this series. He's an incredible pastor. He's an author, he's an international speaker, and in fact, check this out, this series was actually birthed out of a time that he spent with our pastors doing some training with us, and that's how we came up with this series. So in round three, here's where Dave is going to be going. He's going to be coaching us on how to answer this question, big question, why does God allow Satan to exist? It's going to be a great week. He's going to train us then on the authority that we have as Christians over Satan and how we can train other people to fight against Satan through the process of discipleship. It's going to be great. So this is where we're headed in this series. So at all of our campuses, are you excited for round one of this fight? All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, let's get it. Come on. All right. 
I, I don't know why I'm doing this. I just see other people doing this on, on TV. All right, let's get ready. Why do they do that? I'm, I'm not sure. All right. Just thought a little bit of fun there. Whew, got a little sweaty. My bad. All right. So I started with the premise that you can't believe in Jesus without believing in Satan. Why? Because Jesus fought against Satan, and Jesus trained others to fight Satan. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to read the fight that Jesus had with Satan. It's in Luke 4, and I'm going to start in verse 1. Here we go. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. He was fasting. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him. He quoted scripture here. It's written, man shall not live by bread alone. And then the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said to him, to you I will give all this authority and their glory for it has been delivered to me and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him. He quoted scripture again. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And then Satan took him to Jerusalem to set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command. Now Satan's quoting scripture. He will command his angels concerning to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from Jesus until an opportune time. Now listen. Jesus is at one of his weakest moments right here, and Satan begins to throw punches. And he tries to hit Jesus where he's most vulnerable in this moment. And we're going to come back to this fight in just a few minutes, but did you catch that last line? Did you see it there? Satan departed Jesus until an opportune time, meaning this, he's coming back. He's planning a comeback fight, right? He's coming back for the next round, and it's going to be at just the wrong time. And he always does the same thing to you and me as well. So as we're going to get to know our opponent today, we're going to see that we need to constantly be on our toes at all times because Satan is always planning a comeback fight for us as well. In fact, Peter, who followed Jesus, one of his followers, he said this, he said, be sober-minded and be watchful. Your adversary, that's what Satan means, by the way. Your adversary, your opponent, the devil, which means accuser. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So, we're going to get to know our opponent today from the experiences of Jesus and what Jesus taught about Satan so who is Satan? Who is he? All right. Number one, if you're going to take notes with me today, Jesus teaches us this, that Satan is a liar. He's a liar. He's a distorter of truth. He's a deceiver, very skilled in deception. And he tempts us with twisted words, and he desires to have us believe his lies are truth. See, Jesus goes so far as to call Satan the father of lies. And so we're going to look together at Jesus' words that are recorded in John 8:44. If, if you're following along on the outline, I made a mistake on your outline. I put Matthew 8:44. It's from John's gospel that we're going to be reading. So, he was a murderer, Jesus said, from the beginning. And he does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, let me just kind of break this down for you of how Satan does this to me. And then see if you can relate to this, okay? It's a very small example, but it's a, a real-time example for me, okay? So it's, it's hilarious to me that I actually made a mistake on the outline for this particular week. 
Let, let me explain to you. It, it was printed, it was submitted to you version on your smartphone there before I could actually make a change to it. And I accidentally put Matthew 844 instead of John 844, right? So I made a mistake. I made an oops, all right? It's on me. I'm not saying that Satan is behind me making this mistake. I'm not saying that at all. It's on me. I just made a simple mistake. But let me tell you how this works out in my life and see if you can relate. As soon as I realized that I made this little mistake, I thought to myself something. Thousands of people are going to see that mistake. And they're going to think that you're an idiot. Did you see how subtle that was? Did you see what happened there? See, Satan leveraged a very soft spot for me. Because back in the day, I just, I wasn't good in school. I didn't have the best grades. I was always being compared to someone in my family who had really good grades. And so he took this very soft spot for me. And here's the thing. Those are lies. I'm not stupid. I, I'm not. I, I, I'm not dumb. And I don't think that you think I'm an idiot. Right? But... Well, even if you do, I don't care. <laughs> because why? Because I've learned how to fight against the father of lies. See, he took this one little mistake that I made. I made the mistake, and here's what he did. He leveraged it for a soft place, a vulnerable place, and he used it to lie to me. That Kent, you're stupid. These people are going to think you're an idiot. And he caused me to think thoughts that just are not true. And that's a very small example, but I just wanted to see, even this week, th this is happening to me. Now, some of us, we fight very big lies. You know, we, we are up against the ropes of life, and we're being pummeled by punches of anger and anxiety, of depression and fear. And friends, we have to recognize that the father of lies, what he does is he leverages what's been spoken over to you in your past. He reaches back to when you were a kid or several years ago when something happened or something was said to you or done to you. And then he tries to have a field day with your mind. The mind is his playground if you don't know how to fight back with the truth. Of God's word. See, what we see in this fight with Jesus and Satan in the wilderness is that Jesus is showing us how to fight with truth, knowing God's word, knowing who we are according to God in Christ. So know this from John 8:44 that Satan is a liar. That's one of his A games, and he brings it all the time. So secondly, as we get to know our opponent, Jesus also teaches from that exact same passage, number two, that Satan is a murderer. See, Jesus said he was a murderer from the beginning. And this is a reference back to the beginning of our first parents, Adam and Eve, who were deceived by Satan into eating that piece of fruit from the tree of life that God told them not to eat from. See, God said, I'm just warning you, I love you as your father, I'm just warning you, if you eat of this tree, you will surely die, which is loving, right? That's a loving warning that a good father would do. He's watching out for them. But Satan sees this opportunity, and he lied to them. You know what it said? It's, Satan said, you won't die. You, you won't die. God knows that your eyes are just going to be opened and you're going to be like him. So he lied to them and they ate. And Satan that day succeeded in their spiritual murder. He ex succeeded. Now, now they wouldn't just taste physical death. They would taste spiritually death that day. Continued to be separated from God. Thrown out of God's presence. And Satan is still doing the same thing today. And he wants to make sure that people remain spiritually dead, separated from God. He is a murderer of souls, and he does not play games in this area. He goes after us. See, this is why it's incumbent on the church, you and me, to reveal the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ. 
that he came to raise us back to life. What Satan meant for evil, Jesus came to lift us back to life. And it's on all of us to practice what the apostle Paul taught the young Timothy when he said this, fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life which God has called you, which you've declared so well before many witnesses. See, friends, Satan is a murderer of souls. And because of that, you and I, the church, we have to fight back by introducing people to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. So Satan tries to make that not happen at all because he's a murderer. The third thing, if you're taking notes with me, that we learn about our opponent from Jesus is this, that Satan is a thief who kills, steals, and destroys. And this is incredible imagery that's given to us so that we can see Satan's intentions for our lives. See, the truth is, is that Satan, he is a thief of everything that is good in your life. But let me just stop here for one second to mention something to you. See, I don't believe that Satan is behind all bad things. All right, you know, so yesterday when I accidentally scraped my van into the garage, you know, the garage door, that's me. Just being me, right? That's not on Satan. You know, that's, that, stuff like that is going to happen, right? We, you know, some of the messes that you have in your life is because you deliberately sin. That's not on Satan. That's on you. Some of the messes that we are in are because we make bad decisions and we live in this fallen world. See, some of that, that, that's not on Satan. That's on us. We participate, so to speak. We, we We almost do Satan's work for him. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so so know this about Satan, though, that he does want to destroy your dreams. Satan does want to kill your joy. He wants to steal anything and everything that brings you peace and happiness in this life. That's why Jesus warned us of this scheme. In John 10.10, it's recorded, Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus also said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now, friend, listen, I might not know exactly what it is that you are going through right now. I don't know what it is that you're fighting, but I know who is fighting in your corner. His name is Jesus, and he is the one who is the restorer of life. The one who defeated death is fighting right beside you right now. See, and we're going to talk a lot more about that next week, but we do not fight from a place of defeat. As Christians, we fight from a stance of victory, and we're going to talk a lot more about that next week. So if you've got something in your life that is crushing you right now, then you need to get here next week. If you know somebody in your life whose, man, situations and circumstances are just pummeling them, then you need to invite them to come with you next week. If you've got plans to be out of town or you have plans that you, because you want, you know, you're not going to be here, cancel the plans. Seriously. Get your butt back here for round two of this fight, okay? The fourth and final thing for our time today that we can learn about our opponent, Satan, Jesus said this. He, he experienced this, that Satan is a tempter, okay? He's a tempter. In our text for today... We see that Satan tempts Jesus over and over and over again. When Jesus is at his weakest, Satan leverages that moment of vulnerability to tempt him in a way that John describes. Check this out. There's a pattern that Satan uses. 1 John 2.16 says this, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father in heaven, from God, but from the world, from the prince and the ruler of the world. See, Satan tempts Jesus first in this passage for today with the lust of the flesh. You saw it. Jesus was hungry, right? So Satan tempts him. Turn this rock into bread. And, and he could have done it, right? But Jesus, he doesn't do it. 
He doesn't fight that way. Jesus punches back by quoting scripture. Interesting. He says, man does not live by bread alone. And he there quotes Deuteronomy 8.3. And he places his trust in God alone. Now, round two of this fight, Satan tempts Jesus with the lust of the eyes. And Satan shows him all the kingdoms of the world, and he says, they're mine to give to you if you'll just worship me. And Jesus fights back again by quoting scripture. Deuteronomy 6.13 this time, he says, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Round three of this fight, Satan tempts Jesus with the pride of life. He says, throw yourself down from the pinnacle of the temple. See, God promises you, Jesus, that he commands his angels to guard you. Now, Satan himself is quoting scripture. He knows a lot of scripture, and he can distort scripture, and that's what he's doing here. He's using this scripture to say to Jesus, hey, Jesus, show God and everybody just how important you are. And Christ counterpunches here as he quotes scripture again. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again from Deuteronomy, this time 6, 16. Can you guess which book of the Bible Jesus was meditating on while he was in the wilderness? What is Deuteronomy? Thank you, Alex Trebek. Right? See, Jesus was meditating on Scripture from the book of Deuteronomy. In this particular account... How did Jesus fight back against Satan? With Scripture, the Word of God, with God's truth. See, that's not how we would usually think to fight, but this is how we need to train. So as we wind down the first round of this fight series, I want to help you fight like Jesus. I want to help you to be able to fight back with Scripture, the Word of God. So we're going to get very practical right now. And our team has put together some very practical resources to help you fight. And the first one is this, the 21-day fight challenge. You should have received this little postcard on the way in. If you didn't, you'll be able to receive it on the way out. And here's what I'm going to do. I am going to challenge you to a fight. Not against me, but we're going to fight together as a church against Satan. So you can be ready to counterpunch him when he begins to lie at you. And so what we're going to do over the next 21 days as a church is memorize this passage that's on the back of this postcard. It is one of the best passages that you can memorize in the middle of spiritual warfare or what we're calling fight. So I want you to put this card in a place where you'll be able to see it. Grab it every day. You can go over it. You can say it out loud in a place. I'm going to put this in the visor of my car. When I'm at a stoplight, I'm going to pull it down, and I'm going to say it over and over again to be able to memorize it. Okay, so that works for me. So here's what we're going to do as a church at all of our campuses. We are actually going to say this out loud right now. This is going to be our memory passages in the next 21-day challenge, okay? I want you to say this with me. It's coming up on the screen right now. You can say it from your card or on the screen. Here we go. Say it with me. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, louder, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So together, over the next 21 days, I challenge you to memorize this passage. We're going to keep coming back to this passage over the next two weekends in our worship services so that we can memorize this together. Now, if you have that postcard in front of you, you're going to see at the very bottom here that we've created another resource for you. We have created what is called the fight site. Yeah, the fight site. Kind of 
got a rhythm to Anyway, okay, maybe just me. All right, so what we're going to do on this website we've created at northway.org slash fight, our team has created an incredible resource for you to be able to fight against particular circumstances that you may find yourself in. So here's a screenshot of the website, okay? Here's the fight site, all right? And everybody, I want to draw your attention to the fact that our messages are going to be there. And then you also see, take a look at the right hand side of that website. You can see on the right that there are different circumstances that you may find yourself in, that you may be struggling with. Okay, so maybe you lack confidence. You're confused about something in life. Maybe you're dealing with depression or discouragement. Maybe your marriage is struggling right now. Maybe you're dealing with temptation. And here's what you can do. You can click right on the right there with whatever circumstance you may be going through. And then you're going to find yourself at a page that has prayers, scriptures, promises from God for that particular fight that you are in, that particular struggle. So for our time today, let's just click on discouragement. Okay, take a look at this. We're going to fight discouragement. That's what pops up. Okay, this page is filled with scriptures that you can meditate on that you can pray over your situation so that you can fight discouragement. You can print these things out, by the way. They can also be PDFs on any one of your mobile devices, okay? An incredible resource for you there. Okay, everybody, so as we now end the first round of the fight series, I wanna do a quick review of where we were trained today. See, to fight properly, we have to know our opponent. So do you know your opponent? We learned today, we now know that Satan is a liar, a murderer, a thief, and a tempter. That's who he is, okay? And now I want to invite you to come back next week for round two of this fight. And I want you to bring somebody with you, okay? Our lead pastor, you ready for this? Scott the Stallion Stevens. All right? I hope that sticks, everybody. Scott the Stallion Stevens. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to stick. Whatever. Okay. All right. I'm going to get in trouble for that one. All right? He's going to train us. And here's, here's what he's going to train us on. All right? He's going to train us on the specific punches that Satan throws at each and every one of us. Satan has four specific punches that he constantly uses in our lives over and over and over again to eventually set up the kill shot for our lives. And so, if we learn that pattern and that combination of punches from Satan, you and I are going to be in a much better place to be able to fight back against him. So make sure you're here next week, everybody, for round two of this series. Let me pray for all of our campuses. So Heavenly Father, right now, I ask that you would help us to fight. We fight back like Jesus did. Help us to be able to get into the word. Help us to be able to click on this website so that we can see the things that we're struggling with and the way that Jesus fought Satan. Help us to be able to do the same thing as well. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.